Hello my soccer universe. Uh, my wife is trying to put the kids in bed in that room behind that wall and so I hope the noise is not bleeding too much into this video. I just have no choice. I need to make this video because I want to be ready with editing at the beginning of Liverpool against Arsenal which is probably the the match that I really want. I imagine I really want to watch but we're not talking anything England now that is for tomorrow. Um, we are not talking about La Liga. Well, the weekend it was, we had for the first time uh, all three big ones playing. All three won in very different circumstances. And I decided since, I mean, honestly, my attention was all, how is the train wreck of Barcelona evolving? They won rather easily. We'll talk about it in a second. I'm wearing the jersey that the current jersey is referencing to. Wait for the La Liga jersey review because I think uh, this one, I can tell you right now, is a lot better. Let's get started. It started actually slow. Nil nil. Alaves Getafe. Valencia Huesca. <laughs> was all Huesca. <laughs> Literally, uh, if there should have been a winner, it should have been Huesca, who had many chances. And Valencia takes the lead with the first shot on goal. It was not even a shot, it was a free kick that just found its way freakishly into goal uh, from the you know from the left side. Uh, Huesca gets their well-deserved equalizer in the 63rd cannot find a winner Valencia not looking good I have a feeling that Valencia might look uh, into relegation trouble a little bit this season I really hope not because that's a team that should be up there but ownership issues all around um, Elche against Real Sociedad yeah Elche was a little bit in the game I again if I look at the crest similar with Rio Ave I would not have uh, expected uh, Elche to play in white and green but hey in white and green they play so that's fine uh, it's always surprising to see uh, teams like that I would have expected some colors from the crest Elche at the beginning was not, uh, in the game uh, David Silva made his uh, first appearance actually his first scene was more or less a yellow card late in the um first half there was a super chance um by uh isaacson very ibrahimovic like uh with his back heel out of the air uh onto the crossbar that would have been probably the goal of the season already now but they find the first goal uh through porto uh, in the 55th after marino assist Janozai with a penalty uh, makes it 3-0 and late on uh, Lopez again after Marina assists completes the three goals and Real Sociedad's start looks a whole lot better than uh, what we saw against Real Madrid uh, on last week. Um, speaking of Real Madrid um, there were so many great games on Saturday and Sunday, so many talking points and that game is no different. I actually didn't want to watch that game, I actually wanted to watch uh, Inter Fiorentina and for the first half I could, for the second half I could not for some weird reasons, uh, I switched over to Betis Real Madrid. Also because I saw the Betis within two minutes had turned around um, a deficit against Real Madrid uh, with Mandi and Carvalho, uh, Bonsema insisting Valverde for the lead for Real Madrid. Um, and Bet is actually running riot all over Real Madrid and they needed to make, uh, you know, Kroos needed to come out, Modric came on. And then same thing, Ude got out, is gone, kind of a little bit more the old guard uh, in and give uh, Real Madrid a little, a, little, a little bit more stability. I mean, uh, Zidane really wants to work Odegaard behind the strikers, but didn't really work. It starts badly. I mean, I thought it was offside at first, but Emerson scores an own goal. Uh, if Bonsema would have hit it, I probably it would have been offside uh, in the second half. So 2-2. Two, two. Emerson did not get out of the bed <laughs> on in this one. Uh, with, yeah... Did he touch? Did he touch Jovic? I mean, Jovic is running alone on goal. Maybe gets clipped. Maybe gets touched by Emerson. He's the last man. They look at it in the replay. If you look at it live, it really thought that M uh, that Jovic is um, stumbling and fall off on the cross. But VAR red card for Emerson. Pretty tough. Pretty tough call. I have to say, even if there was a free kick given over or, or whatever. But I have to say, I was kind of all right with that decision. I could see how. But what happened then uh, in the 80th minute, 
where I just from a counter attack kind of I mean I I I thought him they they were appealing handball for Betis when the VAR review came. No, it was handball on the other side. Uh, when I who who was 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 Mayoral was pushing Patra into the ball, and the ball hits the hand. Uh, but uh, the hand was in such a way that um, how, how, how to say it was close to the body, and then in falling forward, the hand falls forward and the ball hits it. But the main thing, it was a push. This is never a penalty, <laughs> never. VAR says it's a penalty, and Sergio Ramos <laughs> uh, gets his uh, goal. Bet this player's outrageous, and I gotta say, I mean, Real Madrid continues. VAR and Real Madrid are becoming best friends again. I hope it will even out. But this was one uh, that the ref stole for Real Madrid, because I think Betis would have well deserved an uh, um, draw here. Levante winner was Asuna, Bilbao wins the Basque, uh, little Basque with 2 1 against Atleti Club. I think we have to talk about Atleti. Uh, I'm very in Barcelona, but I think probably the most fun performance was definitely Atletico Madrid against Granada. Atletico came out to play, having lots of fun. Correa, Cross, Costa, Hera in ninth minute, 16th minute, um, a little bit of 15th. Um, Joao Felici is brought down a box, Saul. Steps up for the penalty, it is missed, and then even the rebound uh, is missed. Um, Granada barely hanging in there with very weird jerseys. Um, barely hanging in there, and Atletico Madrid coming out to play. Correa, after Joao Felice assist, makes it after the half already 2-0. Then Joao Felice gets his goal in the 65th. Um, meanwhile, Suarez comes on in the 70th for his first game, and one of his first things that he did, a wonderful touch deflection into Llorente's path, who runs on goal in the 72nd and makes it 4-0. Suarez and himself, uh, Llorente returning the favor, <laughs> makes it uh, 5 on his debut. Um, you know, the player, the Barcelona, does need Molina, pulls one back, but then stoppage time 6-1. That's a statement win. I mean, Atletic, Atletico Madrid. I know we had this early last in the preseason as well. Atletico Madrid looking like to play for fun and then it did not turn out that way. If they continue this form, I would say Atletico Madrid, watch out the rest of the league. Uh, Sevilla against Cadiz had an early goal this, this, this allowed, but Cadiz was well in this game and actually um, took the lead early in the first half through Sanchez after Negredo assist. But then Sevilla came a little bit out to play, ratched it up in the last half hour. De Jong, after a nice Navas cross, makes it 1-1. And then very late, uh, also a little bit uh, controversial, I think they were appealing for offsides. El Haddadi in the 90th makes it 2-1. And then in the whole uh, thing is then Rakitic uh, also then adds a fourth one. Cadiz was not happy, let's put it that way. Um, Another interesting one was Valladolid against Celta Vigo, not one that uh, they would pick out. Iago Aspas, an amazing first goal. Guardiola with the penalty can equalize for Valladolid, but uh, very late on in stoppage time, Aspas would run clear on goal. He is uh, fouled, seemingly pulled back on the shirt, and he's so upset with that, that he is just uh, taking the ball, throwing it away. It's a clear foul if you see it, but they don't go on the VAR and Aspas is booked. Ridiculous. Should have been a red card and probably a free kick for um, Celta Vigo. And then we go to Barcelona against Villarreal. I really, I was... It doesn't happen every time that uh, there's Roma, Juve and Barcelona Villarreal and I choose Barcelona Villarreal at least at first. Could finish with uh, the other game. Uh, I I think all eyes, how will Messi play, how will Koeman's Barcelona look like, uh, and so on. Well, they look darn fine, and what I found even more interesting is that Messi did not play that big of a role, uh, especially in the first two goals. Uh, in a way, there was even uh, the second goal, Coutinho, there was Messi somehow there, but he decided to go for Fati, who makes it 2-0. Fati already four minutes before that. After a nice uh, Alba assist, the commentator first said he took the ball away from Messi. I, I don't think so. When Fati is in a much better position and just uh, takes it directly, puts it into the net. 
really nicely. The one thing is, as good as Barcelona looked, they looked solid. Uh, we have to talk about Villarreal. The first foul Villarreal made was late in the second in the first half, and that was for a penalty foul. There was nothing else. They were not on the field. They said, "Yeah, here's Barcelona. Oh, here's Messi and whoever and Coutinho and yeah, um, nothing." There was no resistance. They maybe tried to play with Barcelona. I don't know what the match plan was, but uh, as much as I think VRL is a, a decent side that could challenge, this was an absolute stinker what they produced in this game, has to be said. Uh, Messi gets a penalty, gets his goal, celebrated normally, I would say, uh, and everything else. Yeah, what can I say? It was really... Uh, Easy for Barcelona to score those four goals. Second half was just an exercise in taking the time, the clock down. 4 0 Barcelona. Great start to all the season. If they continue like that, I doubt that they will continue like that uh, because they will never find such an easy uh, opponent again. And it directly highlights one problem that I have as much as I like La Liga, there's lots of great stuff in there. But at times the physicality is missing. I remember the first La Liga watch that I watched in the stadium was Barcelona against Malaga. And all my friends said, have you seen any tackle? And that was 60 minutes in. I said, no. It's uh, like basketball in a way. No. You know, it makes for beautiful play, but uh, something is a little bit missing there. So with that, we have the table for the first time all big guys have played and yeah uh, we have probably the saddest switch on top of the table both Betis and Granada lost but because Granada lost by so much Betis is top of the table uh, yes it is not because Real Madrid has one less and the other two have two less uh, but it's a rather odd switch on top of the table the Real Sociedad also has two little points couldn't get to six points so six points is all they need it also means if you look at this balance measure it's rather balanced everything in a way uh, you know lots of flip-flopping around but uh, nothing big yet I just want to note that Barcelona is odds on favorites uh, according to the model to win the league. Real Madrid a little bit behind it and Atletico Madrid. Let's see how this will develop. Real Sociedad putting themselves a little bit in position for the Champions League um, just behind Sevilla. We have during the week we have two rounds because we have a midweek round. I don't know how much I will see of that because my focus will be on Champions League and Europa League to be honest but and you will get the uh, summary of all these games, uh, not during the week, but also um, in a week from seeing this video. Real Sociedad Valencia would be a great game to start it off, but I'm not sure if we will uh, see much of that. Um, the big one is Celta Vigo against Barcelona, Sevilla Levante. Yeah, there's some nice stuff in there. Um, Real Madrid playing against Valladolid, owned by Ronaldo and Atletico Madrid against Huesca. Let's see how this will go. Uh, Granada has been postponed because Granada has to play in the Europa League playoffs. No idea when this will be made up. And then on the Saturday Sunday round, we have Barcelona playing Sevilla. That's the last game. That sounds like fun. Atletico Madrid via Real. Can via Real do it do it again? Will Atletico Madrid score more than six? That's that's one an early one that I would say yeah that might be interesting to watch. Uh, Levante against Real Madrid also not too. Um, interesting. Liga. I wanted to watch Little Nod for some reason I couldn't so the first thing I watched was the big clash between Santa Tien and Stade Ren. I really cleared my schedule for, 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 for that one and I have to say Ren completely dominated the game, bossed the game. Saint Etienne, especially in the first half, was not on the field. It was very much deserved when after Buriga um, assist Ag Agerd makes it 1-0 for Ren. It should have been 2 at least. Uh, Sanatien comes out fighting, uh, score a goal through Nordin uh, that is ruled out for offside and then Ren basically five minutes later goes down the other half, makes it 2-0. That settles the game really nicely taken by Girassi uh, and it makes then in the 89th uh, Uno makes it 3-0. Fully deserved victory for Ren who look really 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 strong. Sorry the light is and I don't know why it is kind of going crazy. 
but I want to keep it on for now. I have to work on that. Uh, Marseille dominates against Metz and doesn't find the goal. And then Metz with the first shot and goal through Niane in the 71st gets the goal. In the stoppage time of stoppage time, though Marseille, it was only four minutes, but in the 95th, Sanson gets the well deserved equalizer. Marseille should have won that. Marseille, since they beat PSG, they have not uh, won a game. And they played mostly at home, which was the other thing that I found rather curious. Um, then Bordeaux needs a uh, goalless draw. Angers uh, Brest 3 2. Brest kind of had a short high for now. They're losing against Dijon, Montpellier 2 2. Monaco against Strasbourg was an, another interesting game. Um, ben Yedana, after fall and assist, makes it 1 0. And Aguiar, just before the half, 2 0. Uh, Strasbourg comes out with a bit better, uh, I'll say, attitude. Gets immediately in the 40 46 the 2 1, uh, but then Fallon finds against Ben Yeda in the 53rd, makes it 3 1. And you think the game is done. However, there was a slight twist there. Chumani then gets sent off with yellow red, um, and just 10 minutes later, this is a C for holding. The last man, I mean, um, the Strasbourg defender was clear in the box, just, just needed to pull it back in the M net. So this is a C pulls them. They are two down. And the penalty is uh, scored by Ajork. And then, or Ajork, Ajork should be. And then Strasbourg is trying to get the equalizer but cannot find it. So, highly intense game there. Nîmes last 1 1, gets Lim a little bit off the Schneid. Lorient against Lyon was a rather push win by Lyon. Uh, Vissa gives Lorient a well deserved lead, but then when Lyon tries to turn on Dubois, Gets equalizer, but I think it was uh, more Lorient that was uh, going for it. And start uh, start Reims against PSG. Reims really having a poor start to the season. I think they will be happy to be out of the Europa League to kind of concentrate more on the league again. Uh, Mbappé assists Icardi. Uh, Neymar going wild, but a little bit too showboaty in many ways. Especially one where uh, he wants to backheel it into the net somehow when probably normal touch will, would have done. That's the problem with Neymar, that he gets sometimes too showboaty. Mbappé also assists the second goal by Icardi. All four, big four, with Di Maria, Neymar, Mbappé, Icardi all playing. But Di Maria needs to uh, rest for the next four games because of his speeding in Luc Le Sic. Um This gives us now the table that we have Ren. Pretty dis I mean, I don't want to say decisive, but they enjoy a lead over Lille, Montpellier, Saint Etienne uh, uh, falling down. Uh, uh, loss is all as a promoter team is hanging in there. PSG, now you see, uh, ever since they lost the Leclerc League, they have three wins in a row and are climbing, 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 and still are the odds on favorites. Whereas Marseille, now they're already behind PSG. Uh, down remained unchanged the last few positions uh, it's still Strasbourg, Stadteras and Dijon so let's see where this goes the next round um, is also PSG starts against Angers this is done by Sunday with the big game because Lyon and Marseille uh, I'm looking for other games uh, Rennes playing Stadteras should be, an, should be an easy win other than that I don't see now I mean Brest Monaco could be one and Nice not I don't know last answer that's a certain Let's see about it. From Portugal, I owe you the Monday night result because por between Portimonense and Passos de Ferreira um, and it won one, uh, which gave to the change to the previous table that just Passos and they move up uh, in eighth. Since Sporting and Gilles Vicente did not play, why did they not play? Because both teams had many COVID cases, so this had to be postponed. Then in the current round, Braga against Santa Clara, shock uh, loss. I thought uh, Benfica beats Moraranje and I saw uh, Boavista Porto Port a little bit. Porto actually uh, dominating the first half, cannot find the goal. Uh, they make no compromise uh, right after the half. They make it 1-0, uh, then Sergio Oliveira free kick is deflected. The Musa Marega, who had already missed the sitter, scores two more. And uh, Luis Diaz very late, makes it 5-0. Resounding victory, Sporting also a uh, victory 2-0 against Passos de Ferreira and there was a 0-0 between Rio Ave and Vitoria Guimaraes. We still have a game there. 
But Porto now leads the table based on goal difference over Benfica. The two of them are so evenly matched. Uh, Santa Clara surprisingly also in there. Uh, Sporting with just one win is there, but uh, watch Braga. Braga is a team that should not uh, have anything to do with relegation, I think. And the next round ends on Sunday, so maybe on next Monday I can make already a full vi video with all, all the results. Um, I don't see, I mean, Porto Marense, Sporting, Benfica, Farense, I'm going with uh, Porto Maritimo. Uh, there is not really a matchup that one that pops right out there. Anyway, this light makes me crazy. <laughs> Anyway, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, uh, subscribe to my channel for see more videos like this and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there! I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye!